War Thunder is the sponsor of today's video. This video contains spoilers for the original version of Silent Hill 2 and the lore surrounding it. It's not clear if the remake will change anything, but it's safe to assume the majority of the core story will remain the same. You have been warned. What is real? The opening scene of Silent Hill 2 shows protagonist James Sunderland looking into a mirror and touching his face. He's not washing his face or wiping something off of it. He's touching his face to make sure he's real, like he doesn't believe what he sees in the mirror without double checking. This is our first indicator of James's mental state, implying that he's disassociating from reality, developing a feeling of being disconnected from his surroundings and possibly his own mind. He can't tell what's real and what's fake from the very beginning of the game, and things only get worse as the story progresses. Silent Hill 2 Live Silent Hill 2 has some insane marketing. To promote the game's launch, Konami of Europe produced a Silent Hill 2 Live, a theatrical in-person event that put European journalists through a number of outlandish horror-themed trials. On July 5th, 2001, 100 journalists along with the Silent Hill 2 producer Akahiro Amamura, character designer Takeyoshi Sato, and sound director Akira Yamaoka were taken as hostages in a forest just outside of Paris. Yes, taken as hostages by actors dressed like the series' infamous nurses, as well as vague military personnel. It was strange. They were all given a red pill to swallow and then their heads were covered with black hoods while they were loaded into trucks and sent away. After encountering barking dogs and paintball mask wearing guerrilla soldiers, they arrived at a mysterious mansion designed to look like it could be in Silent Hill 2's other world. More nurses stood guard, bodies were hung from the ceiling, and plenty of light effects and sounds pulled the experience together. The unsettling house was then revealed to be the site of a press conference where Team Silent took the stage and answered questions from the journalists who were either still extremely confused, scared, or both. After the conference, the journalists were broken up into teams of 12 and participated in a Silent Hill 2 themed escape game of sorts, where they explored the darkened basement of the mansion with flashlights. The character Maria welcomed the players, saying, I am Maria, I'm real, you must find two lights, you may proceed if there is a green light, but if you see a red light, you may not enter. I repeat, do not touch the red lights. The journalists were then exposed to stomach-turning sights like oozing piles of flesh, a soup that used body parts for ingredients, a bathtub filled with blood, basically all the things you would expect to see in Silent Hill. The event was capped off with a nighttime paintball match because why not? The whole production took two months to plan and cost almost 1 million francs or 1.13 million American dollars. True Psychological Horror to up the ante from Silent Hill 1, Team Silent spent much of Silent Hill 2's pre-production period brainstorming and learning about how human psychology works. They felt that this was what was needed to create the true psychological horror. After all of their study, they resolved that the true psychological terror has to affect the players' heart. It has to uncover and address humanity's greatest desires and fears, sex and death. This is why so much of Silent Hill 2 can be viewed as eerily, sometimes even upsettingly, erotic. SH2V.10 On October 7th, 2019, a near complete prototype of Silent Hill 2 was uploaded to the internet. The game files were pulled directly from a desk that fell into the hands of Ratio Senator, a Silent Hill 2 superfan, and the creator of the letter from Silent Heaven fan site. The prototype is dated July 13, 2001, which is only about two months before the game's initial release of September 24, 2001. The prototype's gameplay starts at the beginning of the game and ends just before the pyramid hit encounter at the Blue Creek Apartments. Because it was made so late in Silent Hill 2's development, it looks and plays mostly the same as the final game. Among the few differences are various changed sounds, some different camera angles, the removal of a few of James's spoken lines, and other small tweaks. The prototype disc contained most if not all of the finished game's data, which made it possible to explore the rest of the game with some modding or hacking. There is a full rundown of all the changes between V0.10 and the final game on Ratio Senator's website, and the prototype can be downloaded from Hidden Palace and played via the PCSX2 emulator. 
monster symbolism. The monsters of Silent Hill 2 were designed to evoke strong emotions in the player, fear, disgust, revulsion, but also arousal and morbid interest. Team Silent accomplished this thanks to the work of character designer Masahiro Ito. According to him, the game's monsters are so effective because they all resemble humans in whatever twisted, abstract way. As monstrous and terrifying as they are, they resonate with the parts of us that we don't want to face. Silent Hill, California Back when Silent Hill 2 was in development, Team Silent visited Konami's American offices in San Bruno, California. They needed reference material to construct the distinctly American streets of Silent Hill, so they wandered through the town and took pictures of various buildings and sites to take back to the studio in Japan. They followed these references pretty closely because there are several notable San Bruno landmarks that made it into the final game, most notably Newell's Bar which was changed to Neely's around the time of release. Considering how foggy it can get in this part of California, it's easy to see how Team Silent could draw inspiration from San Bruno. Additionally, a producer at Konami named Tom Hewlett revealed that the Blue Creek apartments were inspired by a staff member's actual apartment building. The story goes that someone from Konami of America took the visiting team silent around town to look at various apartment buildings, but they didn't feel inspired by anything they saw. When the American had to return to his home to pick up his jackets, his Japanese guests went up to his apartment with him, and inspiration struck like lightning. They said his apartment was perfect for what they were looking for and took pictures of everything they could. Joke Endings In addition to the four possible endings that bring James Sunderland's story to a proper close, Silent Hill 2 also has two joke endings. A dog ending that reveals all of the horrors of Silent Hill are being controlled by a very disturbed Shiba Inu, and a UFO ending that serves as a continuation of the joke ending from the first Silent Hill game, showing that Harry Mason is collaborating with the aliens after being abducted in his own game. Both of these endings have special requirements that need to be met in order to unlock them, and according to Masahiro Ito, they're all canon. The tradition of silly joke endings in Silent Hill video games continued for most of the franchise, with the exception of Silent Hill 4. In his skull, the first time James encounters a save point, he says, Looking at this makes me feel like someone is groping around my skull. It gives me a weird feeling. The save point is represented by a simple red square, far from the scariest thing in the game. But when you activate the save point, the save screen shows a slightly blurred image of James's face through a red filter. This is meant to indicate that the player is the one looking in through the square and groping around his skull, literally controlling his movements and forcing him to go on this journey. Mary's Litter Mary's Litter is one of the most emotionally devastating parts of Silent Hill 2. In fact, Mary's last words to her husband are so sad that the voice cast could hardly bear to record it. According to Jeremy Blaustein, a consultant Team Silent brought on to help with translation and localization, as well as the voice performance direction, Mary's voice actor Monica Taylor Horgan broke down crying after recording those lines. According to other reports, so did everyone else in the room. Despite being consumed by sadness, Monica recorded the entire letter in one take, and it's some of the best voice acting in the game. A Valuable Collector's Item Silent Hill 2 is among the most expensive original PS2 games to obtain for collectors. According to PriceCharting.com, sales can range anywhere from around $100 for just the disc to almost $150 if it also has the case. Sealed, professionally graded copies of Silent Hill 2 have also sold for thousands of dollars. Price of used copies of the game continue to go up as none of the original four Silent Hill games are available physically or digitally anymore. Silent Hill fans have turned to other ways of playing the game to get around the insane prices such as emulation. He Sees You If the opening of Silent Hill 2 distresses you even before the scary stuff starts, there's probably a good reason for that. When James is looking in the mirror at the beginning of the game, the lighting in the bathroom casts just shadows over his eyes. However, if you pump up the brightness on that image, you can see he's looking directly into the camera, staring at the player. Or at least that's a fan theory. Masahiro Ito has come out and said that it's headcanon. James never looks at the player. It's cool to think about though. The music of Silent Hill 2. The legendary music of Silent Hill 2 was created by Akira Yamaoka, Team Silent's sound director.
Oh, it's you. Yamoka took the lessons he learned working on the first Silent Hill to create what he calls an enriched music style that no one had ever done before, and the music speaks for itself. Since he was also creating the ambience noise and other sounds for the game, Yamaoka was able to create a completely unique soundtrack that is polished and sophisticated, as well as ominous and terrifying at the same time. Some of the inspirations Yamaoka has said he had for the development of Silent Hill 2's soundtrack were Twin Peaks, Metallica, and Depeche Mode. War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made and is available now for free on PC and consoles. No additional hardware is required. Even in simulator mode, you may operate any tank in any aircraft with just a mouse, keyboard, and controller. Take command of over 2,500 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships of 10 major nations, ranging from biplanes and armored cars of the 1920s to the fighter jets and main battle tanks of today. Each vehicle is meticulously detailed down to the engines, fuel tanks, weaponry, and crew, all of which are vulnerable to damage or disablement by enemies fire. I really enjoyed playing air battles and was instantly hooked. The wait time to get into a match is quick and the interface was easy to navigate. Air combat games have always been my personal favorite genre and they've made it really accessible. Join a worldwide community of over 70 million players and epic PvP battles today. War Thunder is free and available on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox. Sign up today using the link in the description and pinned comment. A huge bonus pack across all platforms will be given to new and returning players who haven't played in 6 months. This pack contains several premium vehicles, the unique Eagle of Valor vehicle decorator, 100,000 silver lions, and 7 days of premium account. It's available for a limited time only, so be quick. The Creation of Pyramid Head Pyramid Head wasn't created from scratch during the production of Silent Hill 2. Masahiro Ito adapted the character from a painting he created in 1995 called Pyramid Figures. This was part of his Strange Head series, which he shared on Twitter in 2017. The design evolved over time through several more paintings until the final version that showed up in the game. However, because of the limitations of the hardware they were working with at the time, some of the intricate details Ito came up with aren't visible on that final character model. The definitive design of Pyramid Head is the most recent statue that was created by Gekko, with input and supervision by Masahiro Ito himself. James Sunderland Action Man as part of Silent Hill 2's marketing, the game appeared on the cover of PlayStation Magazine in June 2001. The arts for the cover was created by comic book artist Stephen Platt, and his rendition of the game's protagonist definitely leans more towards a comic book action hero than the depressed haunted man in the final game. But hey, it was probably fun for its time. We're not sure James had those abs in the game though, and those pants look awfully tight. Off with their heads. Combat in Silent Hill 2 was disturbingly violent and excessive in its time. If Team Silent had been allowed to keep one of their planned mechanics, it would have been even more violent. According to producer Akahiro Imamura, in an interview with official PlayStation magazine, the original plan for the game's combats included full dismemberment, allowing James to chop off enemies' arms and heads when he hit them. It's not clear if this dismemberment system was ever implemented in a playable form, but it wouldn't have gotten very far anyway due to regulations. Imamura said in the same interview that the level of violence they were shooting for went against Japan's Computer Electronics Software Association, so they dropped the mechanic entirely. Different versions. Silent Hill 2 was originally released exclusively for the PS2 on September 24th, 2001 in North America, September 27th in Japan, and November 23rd in Europe. The original versions contained a letter from Silent Heaven, main scenario, five different endings, and nothing else. An expanded version of Silent Hill 2 was released for the original Xbox on December 21st, 2001 in North America, less than one month after the console's November 15th, 2001 launch. Titled Silent Hill 2 Restless Dreams, the newer version added the Born from a Wish epilogue scenario that follows Maria, the UFO joke ending, and allegedly a handful of other graphical improvements to reflect the increased horsepower of the Xbox. The enhanced graphics have been heavily debated since this version's release, since the visuals don't appear to be any better. Restless Dreams was released as Silent Hill 2. Saigo no Uta in Japan on February 22nd, 2002, and later that year for PS2. Europe got the same expanded edition as Silent Hill 2 Interferes for the Xbox. 
The additions and the Restless Dreams expanded version came to the North American PS2 with the release of Silent Hill 2 Greatest Hits Edition on November 17th, 2002, but it dropped the subtitle. The newer version came to PC in North America that following month. The final original release of Silent Hill 2 was Silent Hill 2 Director's Cut for the PS2 and PC in Europe, which launched on February 28th, 2003. The infamous HD remaster. After several years out of print, Silent Hill 2 was re-released on March 20th, 2012, almost a decade after it first launched on the PS2. It hit store shelves as part of the Silent Hill HD collection, which brought both Silent Hill 2 and 3 to the Xbox 360 and PS3, with what was supposed to be a ton of awesome visuals and gameplay improvements. Hijink Studios worked on the HD collection for two years, using the original games as source code. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, because Konami had not properly archived and preserved that source code, they were only given incomplete versions of what Team Silent had created, not what was used for the final versions. Because of this, Hijinx had to work out mass amounts of bugs and technical issues while also porting the game. Some of these had already been fixed by Team Silent, like Silent Hill 3's protagonist Heather turning blue out of nowhere, but many others were introduced during the porting process. Because of this, Hijinx's time was split between fixing things and getting the game up and running on the new hardware. On top of that, logistical issues and internal conflicts between the voice actors and the voice direction team meant that none of the original recordings from Silent Hill 2 could be used. New voice talent was brought in to voice each character, including Troy Baker, who took over James Sunderland from Guy Sihi. By the time it was finally available, the HD collection was released in an unfortunate state. For many, it was basically broken upon release. It was riddled with bugs and glitches. The visual overhaul Hijinx did included removing the series' iconic fog that blankets the town. Masahiro Ito has suggested that this had been done because the PS3 might have not been able to handle the translucent textures they created for the fog, which was not a limitation they had on the PS2. And perhaps worst of all, the new voice work didn't manage to capture the spirit of the original release, which upset many fans. Bug patches were released over time, and a deal was reached with the original voice actors that allowed their lines to be selected as an option after release, but the stain of the Silent Hill HD collection still lingers on the franchise. The cursed collection was made available for the Xbox One via a backward compatibility update on July 24th, 2018. Pyramid Head Gets Around Silent Hill 2's Pyramid Head has become one of the most iconic figures in gaming history. Because of that, his presence extends far beyond the Silent Hill games, spin-offs, movies, comics, and even patch slot machines. Pyramid Head has appeared in a bunch of places, and some of them are pretty strange. He appears as a playable racer in 2009 Crazy Cards Racing on Android and iOS. A chibi version of Pyramid Head appears in a new international track and field for the DS, where players can see the fearsome symbol of pain and punishment sprint, uh, throw javelins, and celebrate victory by spinning his head 360 degrees. At least his profile is accurate, which reads age, timeless, home, the depths of nightmares, likes, torment, and execution, dislikes, everything you hold dear, and skill is strength. He was available to purchase as a skin and PlayStation Home alongside the nurse. He's playable character in the Super Bomberman R. In that game, he is described as an immortal creature that wanders planet Silent Hill and terrorizes the other beings on that planet. He was brought into the Dead by Daylight universe as a killer in Chapter 16, Silent Hill. Cheryl slash Heather Mason from Silent Hill 3 was brought in as a survivor in the same update. He's also a boss character in the Dark Deception, Monsters, and Mortals Silent Hill DLC. Finally, he was added to MLB Power Pros as a playable character on January 22nd, 2024. Considering Pyramid Head is the manifestation of one man's guilt, he sure does get around. Bubblehead Nurse the twitching, jerky movements of the bullhead nurses represent Mary's agony as she suffered from her illness. According to Masahiro Ito, their swollen heads are also a metaphor for Mary's own head, which swelled and moved violently as James smothered her. These same monsters are dressed provocatively, insinuating a sexual nature that aligns with James's inner turmoil and sexual deprivation. 
Masahiro Ito has even said that an early concept for the nurse included its head being wrapped with a thin skin like a condom that contained some kind of liquid and would burst when the enemy was killed. The sexualized nature of the nurses is even more clear in early concept art created by Ito. It also has a long tube strapped to its obscured face, flesh lips. The flesh lips enemy is a fleshy sack suspended in a middle frame, not unlike a bed. Some limbs are visible on the top and bottom of the mass, but the most important part of the enemy is the very clear human mouth located on its nether region. Masahiro Ito has said that this enemy and its mouth specifically are symbolic of Mary becoming bedridden, James's mixed feeling for his wife after she became ill, and the cruel words she would say to him in her pain. Others have suggested that the mouth might be be meant to allude to how Mary used to relieve James sexually. It's worth noting that all enemies encountered after flesh lips or lustful lips in production documents have mouths. Mannequin The mannequin is a figure that consists of the lower halves of two sewing dummies being fused together. It has no arms, no head, and seems to be wrapped in protrude skin. It is clearly feminine in nature, and its legs are supported by leg braces called orthoses, similar to what Mary might have worn to help her stand before she was bedridden. This monster is another manifestation of James's sexual urges and confusion. The idea is solidified in Pyramid Hit's introduction scene, which shows him struggling with two mannequins in a way that looks like it could be sexual. The mannequins look very similar to the statues created by Hans Bellmer, who was known for taking mannequin limbs and arranging them in disturbing ways. Side by side, it's easy to see the resemblance, but Edo has said that this is just a coincidence. Lying Figure The Lying Figure is one of Silent Hill 2's most recognizable enemies after Pyramid Head. It is a humanoid creature that appears to be trapped in a straitjacket made of skin, struggling to get out as it shuffles around on its feet and attacks James. There are other lying figures that crawl and slither on the floor. This monster symbolizes hospital patients squirming in agony, not unlike Mary. In fact, there are several pieces of evidence that these creatures are meant to represent Mary. The shape of the creature's body is overly feminine. Its feet are shaped in a way that makes them look like high heels. Its main attack is ranged acid attack that it launches from its chest, which is where Mary's illness was the worst and could also be suggestive of the venom and anger towards James she held in her heart after she became ill. The versions of this creature that skitter along the floor are like roaches and other pests, which could reveal how James felt about Mary in her last days. The lying figure is also one of the most common enemies in the game, forcing James to face his literal and figurative demons on a regular basis. In the making of Silent Hill 2, Masahiro Ito says that this monster's visual appearance was inspired by a visit from a programmer friend on Team Silent. He was wearing a sweater with the hood up as he walked toward Ito, and he was listening to music on his headphones that he was bobbing his head to as he walked. Maria is a pop star. When designing Maria, Team Silent looked to a young pop star who was lighting up the charts around the time the game was in development. Specifically, they took Christina Aguilera's look that she wore in the 1999 Teen Choice Awards and adapted it to make the colors slightly darker for Maria's outfit. Christina Aguilera was known for flaunting her sexuality in her music videos, which could have also played a part in this decision. It's worth noting that Christina Aguilera's middle name is also Maria, but that's probably just a coincidence. More than one James. Early in Silent Hill 2, James comes across a corpse sitting in a chair in front of a television. This meant to foreshadow an event that comes later in the game, but an interesting fact is that this corpse he's looking at is him. James isn't actually dead, but Team Silent used his exact character model covered in blood. In the making of Silent Hill 2, art director Masashi Tsubayama says that the corpse has the same exact face and polygonal structure. The camera intentionally never shows the corpse's face, but it's eerily similar enough from the angle it is shown to create a sense of unease. If you modify the game to control the camera, you can clearly see that it's James. There are many other corpses throughout the game, all of which are either twisted, mangled, or bloodied in a way that obscures their appearance. Many of those, if not to all of them, are also James's character model. Dedication to Sound 
tasked with creating sounds to accompany the haunting visuals of Silent Hill 2, Akira Yamaoka developed an expansive, immersive soundscape. It has been reported that he recorded more than 200 different sounds for James's footsteps to prevent repetition and emulate the sound of walking on different types of material. That dedication extended to the ambient noise, monster sounds, and everything else you hear in Silent Hill 2, but Yamaoka also carefully chose parts of the game to not use any sounds. For all the work he put into the sounds, he has said that using silence effectively is just as important. Deep Regrets Sometimes greatness comes with a price. Masahiro Ito can definitely relate to the fact because he bleeping regrets creating Silent Hill's most iconic monster, Pyramid Head. He tweeted these feelings in February 2022, although he never provided a reason for them. Fans have speculated that he feels this way because of the way the character has been separated from his origins and the role he was written for. He has appeared in various places, completely separate from James Sunderland even though he's tied to that character and his evolution so closely. Or maybe he saw all of the sexy pyramid head fan art on Tumblr. Yeah, that would do it. Streets of Silent Hill you might not notice if you're busy running away from nightmare creatures, but every street in Silent Hill 2 is named after an author, from William Katz to Andrew Vox and Richard Neely to David Wilst. Each of Southside's 13 streets honored the writers who helped inspire the world of Silent Hill in some way. Silent Hill 2 GameCube Because Silent Hill 2 went into production before the launch of any of the 6th generation consoles, they weren't exactly sure which platforms to develop for. Team Silent was pushed towards the PS2 by Konami because it was the market focus of the time, but they were also unable to get enough information about the GameCube and Xbox, neither of which had been announced yet when the game went into development in June 1999. Closer to the game's release, IGN spoke with Silent Hill 2's producer, Akihiro Imamura. They asked him if a version of the game would be coming to the GameCube, and the answer was essentially no. Imamura stated that the Silent Hill 2 or any Silent Hill title on the GameCube was not likely because of Nintendo's primary audience. According to him, the machine will probably be good, but the demographic will be largely younger gamers initially. That doesn't really fit in with our market for the Silent Hill series. When asked if a censored version would be considered, he responded with, I wouldn't like to sanitize the game at all in that respect. We'd rather make a new game better suited to the specific abilities and market of the machine. We'd consider that. The closest thing to a Silent Hill game released on the GameCube by the end of its lifetime was Eternal Darkness, Sanity's Requiem, and maybe Luigi's Mansion. Pyramid Head Secret Appendage Pyramid Head's original design included an upturned panel on the face of his helmet. That gap in the structure has been conceptualized as a whole in other renditions of the character and in the original game. The front panel slides open. The purpose of this opening in each of these designs is to reveal Pyramid Head's appendage that comes out of his helmet when he's choking James. You can see the appendage in this animation here. Masahiro Ito refers to the appendage as something like a tongue, but only because that is the easiest way to describe it for him. He says that he uses the word tongue for convenience, so whatever is coming out of his helmet is more like some kind of gross thing a normal human mind wouldn't even be able to comprehend. Born from a Wish The subscenario Born from a Wish that was added in the Restless Dreams re-release of Silent Hill 2 is a short experience that puts the player in control of Maria, gives them more information about her, and flushes out the town of Silent Hill and what it is capable of. It takes place in a short period after Maria is born from James' subconscious, but before she meets him. Maria wakes up in the dressing room of a strip club. It suggested that she's supposed to be a stripper, makes her way through town avoiding lying figures and mannequins and ends up in a house where she meets a gruff shut-in named Ernest Baldwin. The following events reveal that Ernest is one of the many spirits trapped in Silent Hill and uh, through helping him, Maria learns about the nature of her own existence. Fake Mirrors the mirrors in Silent Hill 2 are pretty impressive, especially considering the hardware it was built on. To accomplish this effect in such a convincing way, Team Silent bypassed any kind of complicated reflective surface work. Instead, the mirrors in this game work by using double images. Mirrored rooms and mirrored characters are used instead in scenes like this one. 
creating a believable mirror effect. It's really a case of work smarter, not harder. Hyperspray. There's a secret weapon in Silent Hill 2 called the Hyperspray. It can only be unlocked after either beating the game once on hard mode, twice on normal, or three times on any difficulty. Once one of those conditions have been met, the spray will spawn in the motorhome on Saul Street. There are four versions of the Hyperspray that vary in power, but the version you get depends on the star ranking you received at the end of your previous playthrough. You get a weak purple spray that knocks down lying figures and immobilizes all enemies except for the final boss for a below to start a ranking. You get a stronger white spray that can eliminate creepers and chase away the moths in the final boss fight for a rating between 2 and 7.9 stars. You get an even stronger yellow spray that can make mannequins fight each other and immobilize enemies longer for a rating between 8 and 9.9 stars. Finally, you get the strongest green spray that can instantly kill all enemies except for Pyramid Head who doesn't die in the game at all for a 10 star rating. All various versions of the spray don't use ammunition, although James will need to shake them to charge up the extended use. To balance the weapon so players can't abuse it, using any hyperspray also slowly drains James's health. Silent Screams In the jail scene between Maria and James, Maria mentions a videotape that they made together. You find that tape later in the game, and it has to be viewed in order to progress. The tape reveals the truth about Mary's fate, showing James smothering her in her hospital bed until she dies. The haunting images are bad enough as they are in the final game, but it was far worse at one point. Team Silent actually cut out sounds of Mary screaming while James suffocated her. This audio was found in the game files of the PC version of the game and has since been made available on the internet. We're going to play the tape for you now with the cut audio edited back in, but be warned it's very upsetting. Are you taping again? Come on. <sighs> I don't know why, but I just love it here. It's so peaceful. You know what I heard? This whole area used to be a sacred place. I think I can see why. <sighs> it's too bad we have to leave. Please promise you'll take me again, James. <laughs> Handmade facial animations. Facial capture technology wasn't where Team Silent needed it to be during the development of Silent Hill 2. It couldn't capture all of the small details of the human face, and since we would spend so much time seeing the characters talk to each other, this was incredibly important to the team. It was so important that the CG and character artist Sako Takeyoshi ditched the facial capture completely, choosing to make the facial animations by hand. For Maria, Takeyoshi Sato acted sexy in the mirror. To get a better idea of how her face would move when she talked. He can be seen here recreating James's mirror scene from the beginning of the game. Because the face animations were created by hand, that gave Takeyoshi another opportunity to unsettle players. He intentionally made some of the animations exaggerated and unnatural to make sure the players felt uncomfortable and unsettled. Inspired by Bacon the monster designs and horror aspects of Silent Hill were created by Masahiro Ito, but they were heavily inspired by his favorite artist, Francis Bacon. The Irish painter is well known for producing art that unsettles the nerves and gives a distinct sense of violence. Even if you aren't completely sure of what it is that you're seeing, it's easy to see how the paintings of twisted, mysterious flesh and body parts fit into the visuals Ito created for Silent Hill. Abstract Daddy 
The abstract daddy is an enemy James encounters after meeting Angela. The creature resembles two bodies that look to be vacuum sealed in flesh and surrounded by a metal frame. One body is hunched over another smaller one in a way that suggests an unsettling, non-consensual sexual act. The last point is important. Because the abstract daddy is a manifestation of the sexual abuse that Angela suffered at the hands of her own father, and also the guilt she feels for killing him after years of that abuse. This is the only monster in the game that isn't from James's own consciousness, but it also has a connection to him. The abstract daddy attacks by rearing up and slamming down on James in an attempt to cover his face with its flesh and smother him. The flesh lip and other enemy creatures also attack James in ways that prevent him from breathing, which is how he killed his wife. Mandarin Mandarins are monsters that look like women wearing what appears to be Mandarin style dresses, where they get their name from, with long deformed arms that have mouths on the end of them. They always hang below James, using their arm mouths to cling to grates and spit tentacles upward to attack him. Because these monsters are doomed to hang from these gratings forever, they symbolize feelings of helplessness and anguish. If they let go of the grating, they'll fall into the abyss and cease to exist. This mirrors James' own psyche, which is hanging on by a thread as he navigates Silent Hill. The sharp tentacles that they use to attack him are like sudden pangs of guilt, and the fact that they dangle above infinite darkness could reflect the darkness consuming James' mind. Mary. The final boss of Silent Hill 2 is Mary, the reincarnated manifestation of James's wife. In her boss form, Mary is a corpse that is strapped to a metal frame, similar to flesh lips. All of her limbs and her head are completely restricted, and she is suspended upside down as she screams in pain. Likely as a parallel to how she suffered from her illness, sharp tentacles sprout from the bottom and top of her torture frame, which she uses to attack James and strangle him cutting off his breath like he did to her. Mary will also release a group of moths to attack James from long range. In Japanese culture, moths symbolize death. Mary's boss form symbolizes all of the anger, fear, helplessness, loneliness, and sorrow she felt as her body betrayed her. At the beginning of Mary's transformation, she glitches in and out of reality in a visual effect that looks very similar to the VHS tape that revealed what James did to her. Chainsaw Man. After completing the game, there will be a chainsaw lodged into a log just outside of Silent Hill Ranch. You'll be able to hear it after speaking to Angela in the cemetery. This weapon can be picked up and used for the rest of the playthrough, and it might just be one of the best melee weapons in the game. It's very slow, but it can kill an enemy with a single hit, and even several enemies with one attack. Those aren't the only things that make the chainsaw special though. Equipping the chainsaw also gives James a few new animations that are exclusive to it, like raising it over his head and roaring if he stands over an enemy corpse, or leaning on it like a cane for his idle animation. What's hiding under the pyramid? Some figures and drawings of pyramid heads show fleshly matter hidden under pyramid head's helmet. This is stomach turning and perfectly in line with something created by the evil in Silent Hill, but it's not accurate according to the character's original designer. Masahiro Ito said in several places that there is actually a regular head under there. It's not known whose head it is, and even Ito never fully designed what was under the pyramid. However, he has said that he always believed that it was James's head, and that he imagined it was look visually like a binded head with many frames. Continuing with the character's theme of punishment and penance, artwork that accompanied the newest version of Gecko's pyramid head statue shows what it would look like and the head is intentionally obscured in it to maintain the mystery. Fans have independently speculated that James's head is hiding under the helmet, or that the head changes to reflect whoever is looking at it since pyramid head shows up so much outside of Silent Hill 2. Alternate Pyramids the Red Pyramid Thing, the version of Pyramid Head that appears in Silent Hill 2, is a monster that was created from James' own guilt, so there's no real reason anyone should see it. He's too cool of a character to keep confined to one game though, so Ito has designed different versions of Pyramid Head that can realistically be used elsewhere, separately from James Sunderland's journey. The other versions of Pyramid Head are The White Hunter, which first appeared in the six-page comic Masahiro Ito created for release along with the soundtrack for Silent Hill Zero the Japanese version of Silent Hill Origins, The Holy Apostle, which currently only exists as a painting Ito created in 2009. 
there is a third unnamed pyramid head in the art of Silent Hill, Fukuro, a short film created by members of Team Silent in 2001. A child is born. The word Tatsuki appears throughout Silent Hill 2. It is printed on the prisoner coin used in the Room 105 coin puzzle and also on Maria's pills if you look at them closely. This is believed to be the name of a child who was born to a member of Team Silent during this game's production. When translated, the word that encircles the coin says Tatsuki was born in December of last year. Bluebird Team remake was leaked multiple times. Long before Konami's October 2022 Silent Hill transmission, there were rumors circulating about a new Silent Hill game being in the works. They began in February 2021, when Bluebird Team CEO Piotr Bavino told Game Industry Biz that his studio had been working on a horror IP from a very famous game publisher for over a year. That same month, Akira Yamaoka participated in a video interview to discuss his work on the medium. Bluebird Team's recently released psychological horror game that was very clearly inspired by Silent Hill. In the interview, he said he was working on a project that would be announced in the summer, and that it would be one that fans of his are hoping to hear about. If you're a fan of Akira Yamaoka, you're probably also a fan of Silent Hill. This was basically a dead giveaway, but that video was taken down by its publisher after a mysterious third party requested its removal. The rumor mill began to speed up in June 2021, when Bluebird Team formally announced a partner with Konami. The specifics of the partnership weren't explained at the time, but it wasn't a stretch to think that it would allow them to collaborate on one of their most popular franchises given their most recent title. In late September 2022, low quality images of a work in progress version of a Bluebird Team title, as well as concept art, leaked, and they featured a character with an olive drab green jacket and a very distinctive haircut, unmistakably James Sunderland, and the concept art appears to show Pyramid Head's intro production scene. The leak followed months of reports that a Silent Hill 2 remake along with a few other Silent Hill games were in the works. Just before its official announcement, the Silent Hill 2 remake was leaked one more time by Konami themselves when they set up the YouTube stream for Silent Hill Transmission on the morning of October 19th, the placeholder contained metadata and other references to Silent Hill Ascension, Return to Silent Hill, and Silent Hill 2. The YouTube channel Survival Horror Network received a notice that labeled the project as Silent Hill 2 Part 1, implying an episodic release like the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Thankfully, that wasn't the case, and Silent Hill 2 Remake along with other projects included in Konami's Silent Hill Revival were announced later that day, after many months of speculation that mostly turned out to be right. Silent Hill 2 Remake Controversy and Tension even before it was announced, speculation that Bluebird Team was working on a Silent Hill game made fans of the series uneasy. Bluebird Team is known for its first-person horror games like Layers of Fear, Blair Witch, and Observer. While each of these games has its good qualities, none of them has the same quality as a Team Silent game. The worry was that whatever they made would be another half-baked, poorly received Silent Hill title, like the worst of the non-Team Silent titles, Homecoming and Downpour. The worry was amplified by the release of the medium, which felt like Bluebird Team doing their best to make a Silent Hill game, but falling short. When the Silent Hill 2 remake was eventually announced, the reveal trailer ruffled some feathers. Character designs had been seriously changed. The fixed camera of the original was now over the shoulder like a Resident Evil title, and the fact that it was definitely going to be Bluebird Team handling the development didn't make things any better for some fans. Information about the game completely stopped for over a year, which was a little concerning. After frequent and increasingly aggressive calls for news from Bluebird Team, the studio tweeted that Konami was responsible for marketing and communication about the game's progress. This is pretty unusual for a studio in their position to do considering how big Konami is, and might have been evidence that there was some tension behind the scenes between developers and publisher. When the Combat's Reveal trailer arrived in January 2024, there was another wave of negativity. The concerns that the more action-oriented camera perspective would make the game feel like Resident Evil were more or less proven to be valid, showing fast-moving creatures and intense combat. A nurse even vaults over an obstacle at one point, which is not what you would expect from the twitching, shuffling monsters from the original game. The clunky anxiety including combats that fit the character we play and the world they inhabit seem seems to be replaced with slick, action-focused gameplay, or at least that's what Konami wants people to think. 
In another unusual announcement from Bloober, they called out Konami as being responsible for the combat trailer, saying that it's not the spirit of what it used to be or what we're creating now, and that Bloober team had a goal to fully capture this romantic version of a game that's debuted 22 years ago. Maybe one day we'll find out if there's bad blood between Bloober and Konami, but we hope that it doesn't affect how the Silent Hill 2 remake turns out. James Sunderland is an anti-vaxxer. In the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic, James Sunderland's voice actor Guy Sihi revealed some of his personally held beliefs, many of which are as upsetting as anything you'll find in Silent Hill. Replying to a Facebook post by Donald Trump, Guy Sihi said, How many of the tests were actual? Zero. The coronavirus that supposedly causes the disease known as COVID-19 has yet to be isolated. Despite all the BS computer graphics you have been fed on TV and the internet, there is no actual scientific evidence of a specific virus, just like SARS, H1, N1 and AIDS, there is no scientific evidence of a virus. It's all a scam being conducted by the same people, Fauci breaks gates, etc. All of them. To sell drugs that poison you and to impair your natural immune system. If you want the fake vaccine, go right ahead, enjoy it, but don't force it on me and my family. My body, my choice. Not only did he deny COVID existed and revealed himself to be an anti-vaxxer, but he also denied the bird flu and AIDS. Later, he implied that COVID-19 and 5G, as is the fifth generation cell networks that smartphones use today, are both related. Mary's Body at the beginning of Silent Hill 2, James arrives in the town looking for Mary after receiving a letter from her. However, as the story progresses, that letter slowly fades away, implying that it was either a figment of his own imagination or a cruel trick played by Silent Hill itself in order to lure him in. By the end of the game, you realize Mary has been dead the entire time, and not only has she been dead, her corpse was in James's car. Where exactly Mary's body is located is open to speculation, but Masahiro Ito believes that it was in the back seat the whole time. James Sunderland's voice actor, Guy Sihi, shares Ito's belief, but there are other members of Team Silent and fans in general who disagree, saying it must be in the trunk since he would notice it when standing next to the car or driving. Either way, the end water ending of the game makes it clear that Mary's real body made it to Silent Hill with James one way or another. Sequel Connections While Silent Hill 2 is a standalone story, it is referenced later in the series. For instance, James's father, Frank Sunderland, is the superintendent of the apartment building that Silent Hill 4, The Room, takes place in. He's one of the main characters. The nurse who took care of Mary at the Brookhaven Hospital was Rachel. She also made an appearance in Silent Hill 4 via written notes, and her bloody nurse uniform can also be found. Silent Hill 2 mentions a serial killer named Walter Sullivan several times, first in a newspaper found outside of Woodside Apartments, then in an answer to the trick-or-treat box quiz in Brookhaven Hospital, and finally in the Labyrinth Catacombs, where you can find a tombstone with the killer's name on it. Several years after Silent Hill 2's release, Walter Sullivan served as the main antagonist of Silent Hill 4. He's the first and only Silent Hill villain to be mentioned before their debut. Film References It's no secret that Team Silent took a lot of inspiration from a variety of art and film to create Silent Hill. If you pay attention, there are plenty of references to those movies throughout the game. There is a torn poster from The Shining that can be found in several places along the streets of Silent Hill. The Lakeview Hotel also seems to have been inspired by The Shining, since it looks an awful lot like its Overlook Hotel. The outfits for both Mary and Laura were based on the clothes worn by Casey and Trisha Poe, the daughter and wife of Nicolas Cage's Cameron Poe in the movie Con Air. The jacket James wears is based on the M65 military jacket worn by protagonist of Jacob's Ladder. Jacob's Ladder also influenced the game's tone, some of its visuals, and James's own complicated mental state. Like Jacob, James struggles with marriage difficulties, loss, and nightmarish hallucinations. Masahiro Ito also said that Pyramid Head's creation was heavily influenced by one of his favorite scenes in Jacob's Ladder. The suggestive outfits worn by the Bubblehead nurses were inspired by the nurses in The Exorcist 3. The hospital staff from Jacob's Ladder and Bondage Wear. The bondage inspiration comes through more in this concept for the monster.
lost and cut content. At some points during Silent Hill 2's development, Konami's offices were affected by a power outage. As a result, there are some scenes and other contents that were lost and unable to be recreated in time for release. One of those lost scenes showed Pyramid Head violently ripping a nurse in half, and another was an upsettingly extended version of Eddie's introduction, where he's puking in the toilet, but accompanied by extra sounds and even more vomiting that reportedly made test viewers sick. Takeyoshi Sato said that when the computer crashed and lost that scene, he took it as a message from God that they had gone too far and decided to tone it down to its final version. Taking cues from Mr. X. According to our director Masahiro Ito and scenario writer Hiroyuki Owaku, Pyramid Head is a monster that was manifested from the part of James's mind that's trying to absolve himself of his sins and force him to accept reality. Because the monster is essentially part of him, he's impossible to escape forever and you can never truly kill him. Even in Pyramid Head's boss fights, you just avoid him until he leaves. As it turns out, there is a cut mechanic that would have made that dynamic between Pyramid Head and James even more apparent in certain areas, as seen in this clip from the V0.10 prototype of Silent Hill 2. Pyramid Head was planned to free roam and stalk James in certain areas of the game, rather than the enclosed sections where you encounter him in the final version. This might have played a lot like being pursued by Nemesis in Resident Evil 3, which which was released in September 1999 in Japan, around the same time Silent Hill 2 went into development. It's a shame that this feature was removed from the game, but there's the very interesting possibility that Bloober Team will be able to incorporate it into the Silent Hill 2 remake. James and Joseph Early in the production of Silent Hill 2, James's character was envisioned as having split personalities. One would have been the James we recognize, sad and in deep denial, and the other would have been a direct manifestation of his inner darkness and murderous tendencies. Before it was cut out, the bloodthirsty personality was named Joseph, a name they took from Joseph Barnett, who was a man suspected of being Jack the Ripper. In the final game, James's voice shifts noticeably in some scenes, which might be a holdover from this cut concept. It's also worth noting that Mary's name was decided on based on Mary Ann Nichols and Mary Jane Kelly, Jack the Ripper's first and last victims. Silent Hill 2's Biggest Fan one member of the Silent Hill fan community, a man named John who goes by Ratio Senator Online, might just be the biggest fan of Silent Hill. John created the compendium of Silent Hill 2 information and knowledge that informed many parts of this video. I got a letter.com, which is also known as Letters from a Silent Heaven, named after the game's main scenario. He's also a massive collector of games, magazines, clothes, and other merchandise from around the world that he catalogs on his own website. We want to take a second to thank John for preserving the history of this important video game and helping us to create this video. Return to Silent Hill Bloober Team Silent Hill 2 Remake isn't the only version of Silent Hill 2 fans can look forward to. The events of the game are also being adapted into a new movie in production with director Christoph Gans, who directed the first and the best by long shots Silent Hill movie. Whether it was because of Konami or Team Silent, it didn't seem like there would ever be a movie of Silent Hill before 2006. Multiple people tried to get a hold of the film rights to the franchise, including Paramount Pictures, Sam Raimi, and even Tom Cruise's production company. But Gans won against them after begging for five years by showing deep personal interest and knowledge on the game. He sent Konami a 37 minute video with Japanese subtitles that outlined his vision for the movie. His initial plan for the Silent Hill movie was to actually adapt Silent Hill 2's story, but he was worried that he wouldn't be able to address the town itself and its origins since the sequel's story is so focused on James's journey. Now almost 20 years later, Gans is finally getting his wish. Return to Silent Hill. Christoph Gans uh, takes on the events of Silent Hill 2, and all of this is scheduled to hit theaters in 2024. Once more, I want to thank War Thunder for sponsoring this video. Remember to use my link in the pinned comment or video description to play it for free on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox. Players who haven't played in six months, whether new or returning, will also get a huge bonus pack that includes several premium vehicles and other goodies for all platforms, only available for a short period of time, so don't miss it.